I would put a little bit of... peg? No, it's right there. <laughs> but... That's the problem. That's the problem. Are you okay? There's blood. <laughs> yeah, she's bleeding, boys. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, of course, I never ground the <laughs> cut down either, so it's like a razor blade. Oh guys, we've got an exciting day, or a couple of days actually, of working on this tractor. We are gonna be actually putting a kit on it so that we can plant with it. So I've been waiting to say anything about it, but it sounds like we're gonna be running two speed planters, two corn planters this spring. And this has been selected to be our Brody's new planting tractor. And he, he's standing over there smiling because he, he's skeptical, but, um, these are not spaced right to go down the rows, obviously. Um, they are 30 inch belts, which we will be planting with, but we are gonna be putting a wide stance kit on. They're coming out this afternoon to show us how to do it. Well, show maybe us. do it. <laughs> I think they're gonna do it for, for us. us. With us watching, helping. yes, and helping. So basically what we're gonna do is they, uh, the company that's coming out makes a wide stance kit for this machine. So we can put her out to 120, if you so wish, you can go out to 128 inch spacing. So that means center to center. So like our smaller two tracks are set up on 120 inch stance. That is what we are gonna be setting up this tractor with. So it's gonna look like this when we're done only with wide belts on it. So that's how stance it's gonna look. So 120 inches from center to center, that will be dead center of our corn rows. And in theory, the corn planter will be planting right here and right here. So we'll see how we like it. This is, this is gonna be a, a test trial in our ground. Um, we can't plant into our tractor tracks. So we're gonna test it out, see what we think. If this kit works, I can foresee the 9RX not being on the farm and having our planter tractors be two tracks, maybe, in the future. Future plans down the road, who knows how many years. But it's our test trial, and it's gonna be exciting to see how this kit works and how absolute beast mode this thing looks when she's widened out. Here comes Brody, he's preparing the floor. All right, we're here with the guys. They got here. So this is the, this is the kit we're gonna be installing today, and we're gonna get it done today, right? That's the plan. That's the plan. As he shakes his head, no. Uh, I guess it is. It don't look complicated. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, spacers to just pick out everything, right, guys? Get your trucks out at 120 inch spacing. Okay, for so, the potential to be a big roll cross track. So we're widening it with seven inch, you said? Yeah, so seven. it adds seven inches to each side. That okay. gets you to 120 inch centers. Okay, and if you wanna go to 128, that's 11? If you are not a roll crop farmer, broad acre tillage, then you can also get an 11 inch, and that'll yeah, bump you up to roughly 128 inch centers. Gives so, you a little more leverage for turning than this would. Were you this the one that said the shopping cart? Yes. Yeah, so I use the analogy often. Uh, when you're pushing a shopping cart in the store and you, like for your wife and stuff. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> um, you have your hands very close together, it's hard to turn it. The mm -hmm. further apart you put your hands, mm -hmm. the easier it is to turn the shopping cart. And it's the same, same thing with the tractor, the wider the track stands. Yeah. Easier. More, yeah, more so if, if this was going to be a tillage tractor, you guys would advise going to like... If you're not dealing with any roll crop stuff, we definitely recommend the 11 inch. Just gives you that much more, yeah, leverage and uh, 
I mean, stability a little bit, but the main thing is for the turning ability, especially under load. A little less berming in the corners and stuff like that when okay. you're turning around on the headlands. Berming. There is more stability side to side, the wider track stance, you don't notice the oh, yeah. side to side. Rolling it at high speed too, it, it wiggles a little less, like you're not correcting the steering maybe quite as much. Minor benefit, but it's there. Oh, yeah. sweet. Let's, so basically, we have to take all those bolts out. We got to jack the whole thing up. Take all these bolts out right there. All of these. And this? Nope. Uh, it's on the inside. Two. Okay. Those two stay, but yeah, in about, I won't put time, but soon this is all going to be slid off there. Depends how the big Swede performs. We're relying pretty heavily on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we could talk more about it as we go through it, but it, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we're basically got to take track off and take the bolts off, slap on spacers, yeah. and reassemble. Yeah, and there's no no cutting, no welding. It's a, just a bolt-on kit. If you don't, if you want to keep it with your next tractor, you can take it off. Or well, that that matters how. Well, this goes. Yeah. If it's that much fun, then I suppose. <laughs> There's more available if you want to keep adding them. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get her jacked up and go to town. So we are currently trying to detension the track, which you must be doing something because it's blowing a code saying that I have no track tension. We need fancy jacking tools like that. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be much easier. I have never seen this view, I'll promise you that. <laughs> I've never seen this. Think of how easy you could clean now. Just a man in his attire. Just, don't feel I can't roll a tire down a hill, so this is <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Looks like a good spot. We're gonna turn this here machine into a wheeled tractor now. <laughs> so I guess we aren't taking the track off. We took the outside wheel off. We unbolted those that holds this on to there. And then we put a nut behind that to hold this wheel onto that so it don't fall on anyone's feet. And now we're going to, in theory, Pull this all off as one. This is way simpler than I thought. You got Brody, he missed a spot though. Brody! What the heck? We'll just tuck that back up to the next so guy. Clean it up next year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the kit is now installed. Now it's the reassembly of this, and this is where the, the trickier, more lining up. lining up all of these, all of these, and those. We left this loose. From experience, they say that it, it goes better getting the bolts started if this is loose. But everything else is tight, and those just slid on there. So now we just literally, literally in two hours, <laughs> have this back together. This might just take two hours to put back together, though. Doesn't yeah. No, this is... It can be a challenge. I was expecting much more in-depth teardown and... Reassembly, but this is pretty straightforward, simple. Yep. So now we're going to push her closer. So we got the back drive wheel on, and it's snugged up, not torqued. The Canadians have never seen a port of power. Look at what they're going to go home and they're going to order three of these things. <laughs> So basically what we're doing, this is all tightened down. Now we're trying to align these bolts and the front axle bolt. So we put the port of power in here. And believe it or not, we've maybe only used this port of power like four times in our life. See? <laughs> and it's paying off. So 
So that's one side completely done, all buttoned up. So basically what we added is this right here, which I believe is seven inches. And that pushed everything out. So I believe the track was just inside of this before. Now obviously we are, we're past. So now once we do the other side, uh, center to center will be 120 inches, which is what we want for a planter tractor. And yeah, this actually went like they're, they're even surprised how well this went. So let's hope the other side goes that good. We'll get done tomorrow. We're not gonna get done tonight. It's already 515, but went better than expected. And then there's over, over here is Brody. It's past five, so he's fixing. Not fixing, fixing, adding. Oh, he's putting snow scratchers on. And then are you gonna put your new skis on? I am. <laughs> Should we call Eric? There's drilling involved. No. <laughs> it's very stern no, Brody. I think this drill bit is bent. It looks like it. Wow, he just weakened the rail. That voided warranty. That voided warranty, Brody. This is what Polaire says. That's just what the instructions say. Well, we're back. And we got all the bolts out. And we're going to start pulling this away again to put the blocks on this side. This is the part that makes me nervous. I would put a little bit of a peg. No, it's right there. <laughs> but that's the problem. That's the problem. Interesting to pull out of there. Soon. That should. I suppose that's the first time you've seen that. Isn't that always the case? Yeah. One of the dowels stayed on that side. Oh boy. Oh. I'd say you might want to hit that with some penetrating oil. Do we, is that a problem? Yeah, because our face doesn't have a hole for that. I'm sure that should slide right out. Here's the oil. <laughs> that should I'd do it. Put a little bit on this one too, just to uh, it goes on easier. Hmm. Um, we'll figure it out. Oh, uh, the wrist that's a workout. <laughs> yeah. Just need your credit card. <laughs> yeah, we can ship it right there. We'll ship it here and we'll we'll get it to you. <laughs> oh, I suppose. So we actually didn't put the wheel on because now we can see what we're doing instead of trying to look up in there. But we put the quarter power there to here to push this ahead so that we can get the bolt started because the track itself or the weight of it kind of pushes everything together. So that. That's a game changer. Works good. Hey, nice sweatshirt. Twinning. Mine's dirtier. And I've been burnt. <laughs> like that the kit is installed it's uh, retentioned uh, all bolts have been torqued so they're taking the jack stands out from underneath there right now but this job is completed basically all right so they're about to head all the way back up to Canada they've came down 
So we're going to drop the link in the description if you guys are interested in the kit. But basically, we, it was easy. It went, it's noon now. We started at 9 to do that side. So it went above average. Above average. Well, it's, it's but we did have 10. a lot of guys yeah. watching. <laughs> <laughs> we, we generally will say if a guy's going to put it together himself, uh, about 20 man hours to do the complete the complete there, switch over. There's really nothing too technical. I was it's, very overwhelmed talking to you on the phone. Like, it's going to be hard, but after seeing that, that's, that's easy. We could have yeah, done it's, that. No it's problem. nuts and bolts. There's yeah. no welding, cutting, drilling, mm -hmm. nothing. So Yeah, so that went pretty good. So 30 series on up, 2008. 30 series, so 2008 tractors up until what they're making now. Uh, fits uh, if you got an older tractor 20 series or a, the double O series then we can't do it but we can put a suspension axle to replace your solid ones mm -hmm. so it, it improves their ride about up to these 30 series standards so the applications you've seen people doing this to their tractors is planter tractors Planting, strip tilling uh, controlled traffic farming if you're on 120 inch centers uh, that's more the seven inch for the the broad acre. Just want maximum steering leverage and stuff. Then go for the, the eleven one. inch. Which okay. Yeah. So strip till is a lot like a planter. You in theory don't want to be driving yeah. uh, where you're putting your strips at. So that would be the benefit of putting this at one twenty to match thirty inch rows. Mm -hmm. No, this was fun. They're fun guys. We did have a lot of fun working with them and. Um, We'll drop the link in the description. Well, we're into the next project, and I hope that this is the end. Brody, you're awfully dirty. Yeah. Is it dusty under there? <laughs> so, we got my, you've seen this in a different video. We got the valve installed here, pony motor on the back, and we're hoping to finish this right now. There, We made a couple of hydraulic hoses, or they did, and we're going to route them. They're going to hook them up. Hopefully then we can fill it with oil and gas and test it. Hopefully. So I got a question here. Which hose do you think you want to run which direction? That is going to be a very good question on how that valve, we're going to almost have to Whoever. test it. How would we know? I don't, I don't know. And I suppose our hose is... Now one has a 90 on and one is a straight, so you can't just flop it at the valve block so simply. It's going to be right way. 50-50 right. chance that we're wrong. Before I tighten these up, is there any kind of, got to get the air out of the system? Because it's literally no hydraulic oil in this whole thing. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> I have no clue. We're underneath the trailer. There's Eric. Hello. How did you get under there? Uh, I'm skinny. I'm small, boys. I sneak in anywhere. Unreal. Yeah. I made it. So. <laughs> Bro, he's just mind blown. I can cut a hole on the deck. <laughs> so basically, what we need to do here is I get the welder set up. We're going to weld some chain links on in areas that we can zip tie the hoses so that they don't get into any of the feet here that move. And anywhere else, I think we can zip tie up to that bracket there, but this, we may need one to hang off of. Reminder that that tube is there and very sharp. I had to take a couple minute break after my scalp lost some skin to that. Okay, we're gonna weld this on right there. Okay, no ground. Are you okay? There's blood. <laughs> yeah, she's bleeding, boys. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, of course, I never ground the <laughs> cut down either, so it's like a razor blade. What's up, Eric? For driving down the road, how are we gonna rely on this thing not settling? Well, that valve shouldn't allow oil is that, through. Is that our, our stop? I think so. There's valves up there. This valve, I mean, holds which direction. It shouldn't leak until 15 years from now, and then we'll add a valve in somewhere. <laughs> what you don't want is, yeah, if it leaks, settles in the shed, and then you go to back out and catch the 
I didn't know if we wanted valves back by the quick couplers or anything. But that's something we can decide later. Rust has taken place. That should work. Now, something like one right there. Okay, I think we are good. I've zip tied, we got a double wrap wherever it's gonna rub. Right up here, we've got welded on, double zip tied wherever it's a critical area so that, that you don't want it moving. Had a little extra hose, so we wrapped it up nice, put it up in there. And this turned out nice, double zip tied, double zip tied. Here's where we're teeing in. So we're still gonna be able to use a tractor if the motor ever decides to not work or we wanna use a tractor. So those ports are still up there, still plumbed in. There's valves on them. So when we're using the little motor uh, that the hydraulics, either or can be used. So what was here existing is still there. We just tied into it and hopefully we are close. I feel really good about this. This turned out nice. Right up in here is the other side where you can see the valve. Raise, lower, it does have float feature now. And just the handle sticks through to the outside. <sighs> it's not a long project. It just took a long time because we couldn't find the right parts. I'm out. I'm out. That, that way was easier. Whoa. What'd you find out? Oh, we got gas and oil in it. I'm scared about this. The first time. Brody said there wasn't much instructions for the first time. Good. <laughs> and everything we have is fitting wise is tight, so there won't be any spot for Guarantee. air to leak out. Guarantee. Well, I almost hope it isn't. I feel like <laughs> air needs to go somewhere. This is gonna be, I wonder if you can rotate this so we can pull down instead of above our heads. Cause that's something that Douglas rotator cuff is not gonna like the, to make this electric start, it came with a bigger unit, but it was like Am I done? double the price. If I take them three screws out, screws out, how screwed up is it gonna get with the whole spring load of deal in there? No idea. Okay, well, try it out. Is there a way to, okay. Maybe leave it in the off position and we maybe should just rotate it a little bit so that it slowly gets oil into it. Oh my gosh, it's new, it's got compression. <laughs> leaks yet. <laughs> Moment of truth. Oh yeah. It's working. Okay, so I think that's pulling towards the float position. So our 50-50 educated guess was incorrect. Was incorrect. <laughs> Live with it. It's backwards. There are no words. 50-50 <laughs> chance and you'll be wrong every single time. Whatever we think common sense should make, we should just do opposite. Then we'd be right. 
<laughs> She's got a dirty car. Well, I don't no need to run it. We gotta disassemble and drain oil out. It's gonna come out of there like a Engines only shut off when I shut them off. I didn't like that it stalled there, so <laughs> now it's back. Look at him struggling. Well, Doug. What? I failed. <laughs> oh, that's, that looks like my luck. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. You failed at what? Trying to easily program some extra remotes to the door openers. <laughs> Three hours into it. <laughs> Two phone calls. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. I'm gonna have to go to the corner room. <laughs> Cause this is just ridiculous. All right, we saved you the pain of this ordeal. So we got that tight and we are going to operate this trailer. So I'm gonna fire this up. We're gonna to try to unhook the truck if there's enough room, neck it down, make sure the reservoir has enough oil in. Are we ready? It's actually not slow at all. I was kinda of scared it would operate slower. So far, our crimping is a-okay. Well, you're the clean one. I'm gonna go check the reservoir. Oh, someone go check the reservoir, I'll pull the truck ahead. All right, well, she's all uh, hooked back up. We've got that all, it's done, it's done, it works. I can't believe it, I, and I'm so excited about this. Now, we have to uh, get the excavator off of here. Uh, won't be, won't be tonight, it's, dark outside but then we got to focus on the trailer itself like as far as its maintenance components believe that wheel seal might be leaking and then i believe these brakes are shot those might be shot and these are really really fun because to get at the brakes it's these lovely everyone's best friend lug nut style i don't know what the name of it is but then you also got to take the spindle nut off, bearings out, new seal, because the drums are actually bolted to this. You don't just pull the drum off. So I remember that from the last time that I did a wheel seal on this, that it, it's a major pain and time consuming. But at least the new trailers have been upgraded to, you know, easy serviceability or easier serviceability. Long and the short of it is, that project's done and I am very excited about it. But it's quitting time and I'm gonna go see what Doug was into. What's going on? <laughs> He's so mad. Can't even work my phone now. I get the uh, hint he's not in the talking mood. But the door openers are kicking his butt and he's talked to the uh, uh, door opening company like four times and they're like, it's gotta work, do it like this, it's gotta work. It's not working. So now he's just bound and determined to make it work. Anyways, I think that's gonna be the end of this video. Uh, check out that wide stance kit if you have any interest. Uh, we didn't even know any, that a kit like that was made until we were at a farm show. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a game changer for planting with the big frame two track and avoiding planting into the tractor tracks all the time. So pretty cool, glad we got that on there. And uh, we got a bunch more stuff to do to that thing. And probably be a planter tractor. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.